Yeah, Lael Brander talking right now at a uh, conference with the Wall Street Journal. Um, <clears throat> Scott, she's making some optimistic, uh, maybe guarded, I'd say guarded comments about the inflation report this morning. Several economists and now uh, Brainerd, who is the, uh, I guess, presumptive vice chair nominee for the Federal Reserve, um, saying that she welcomes the moderation in the core goods sector. Uh, you'll note there was a, uh, the goods sector came down a little bit, mostly propelled by a decline in used car prices. Um, but, you know, I say guarded because she says there's a lot of potential upside risk to inflation down the road, uh, including uh, the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, uh, as well as the China lockdown. She said these, these um, uh, present upside risk to inflation. Overall, Scott, she gives up a pretty optimistic view of the ability of the Fed to raise interest rates and not create a recession, suggesting there's a lot of strength in the labor market and in the economy. Uh, so she's optimistic about that. But these are, I don't know, maybe the first positive, if very guarded, comments on inflation from a Fed official in a long time. Yeah, she does say um, that the recovery can be sustained even as we bring inflation down. Right. That speaks directly to the question of whether they can engineer the soft landing amid doubts that they can actually right. pull that off. And then the other thing I find interesting that she says, too, is that financial conditions, she thinks, uh, will bring demand down uh, to more sustainable levels, um, i.e. tightening policy, tightening financial conditions a bit, is going to do the job, she hopes and thinks. Now the question is the proof's going to be in the pudding, Steve, as to whether they can actually pull that all off. Yeah, and do so without a recession. I, I, I think the Fed can, can fight inflation and win, but as we've been talking about, Scott, it sometimes wins ugly with the large rise of unemployment uh, and or it ends in a recession. Um, I, I think what the Fed has going for right now is this very low unemployment rate. It has 11 million job openings to you know, kind of play with in the sense that they may get rid of job openings and not actual jobs. That's the upside. But but, Scott, let's remember, tomorrow we got the producer price, in, uh, producer price index, and that's, you know, probably going to show considerable uh, pressure in the pipeline for inflation at the producer level that needs to work its way down into the consumer level at some point, or it will be absorbed in lower profit margins. So, uh, and, and it's not entirely clear to me that we have uh, absorbed all of the price increases that are coming from what's happened in Russia and the China lockdown. So I still think there are I put it this way, I'd say it would be premature to declare peak inflation. At no, this point. For, yeah, for sure. I mean, even though, you know, so, some are tossing that around. But given where the inflation headlines have been over the past many months, I mean, we'll take what we got today and at least have a smile for a day and we'll see what tomorrow brings, Steve. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think that's that's the only thing you, you can do here is uh, is everybody wants to be on top of that peak inflation trade or story. Uh, but but you just can't do it. And even Brainerd herself said you don't want to go too far on one month's headlines. So she's guarded about this optimistic take. All right, from the for sure. Uh, Steve Leeson with the headlines there from Lyle Brainerd. Thanks, Steve.